Joining me now for the roundtable discussion is human rights activist Peter Tatchell. We've got Simon Danchuk, who's back on the show again. We've also got Paola, Paola Diana, yeah. who's a podcaster and, uh, and author. Welcome to the show for the very first time. Look, um, I'll go to you first, Peter. We saw earlier this week a colleague of mine, Rachel McLean, made a comment about a, a, um, a, a political candidate who, who was, a, or is a man, uh, but is now identifying as a woman, and I think the comment was something like, it's a man in a wig. Is that an acceptable comment? I think it's a pretty outrageous and offensive comment, particularly because she was attacking the Green Party candidate, Melissa Poulton, who had, on social media, supported the 50-50 campaign to get more women MPs in Parliament. She was encouraging women to stand for Parliament. And that's a very important good cause because although women constitute 52% of our population, only 35% of MPs are women. So what Melissa Poulton was doing was really good and really positive. And I think to make that cheap jibe by Rachel McLean against her because of the, who she is and the way she looks, I think that was really offensive and uncalled for. Paula, is it a cheap jibe or is there some merit in what uh... I'm afraid I disagree completely with what Peter says because uh, we all know that uh, men who identify as women, because I don't use gendered language at all, well, these men are actually stealing the seats from other women. In 2023 in the United States, the best female cyclist is a man. The best female runner is a man. The best female swimmer is a man. And the woman of the year? A man. Tampax, Nike, Maybelline, they all used men to promote female products. But why, It Paola? is a women's rights problem. So this man who is now, uh, you know, I drew something for you to explain why Unprepared. gender yeah. is a problem for women's rights. First of all, we have to identify that gender is, uh, and gender ideology is different based on age and based on sex. So biological sex, here are older men. Old men are affected by this ideology, but it's mainly a sexual fetish for them. They're called AGP because they're affected by autogynephilia. While old women, you can all see here, they're not affected at all. No older but, woman. Hang on, with respect, we're getting away from the core issue, which is better women's representation Please in leave. Parliament. Let me talk. That's why. And tell that's him why to we, talk. That's well, why this issue is. Let's calm things down a bit, Paul. It's, it's very important. No, no, it's very important that we talk also about children and young adults, because the gender ideology is affecting children's rights as well. Yes, I want. But Simon's Simon's looking. He's looking very lonely there in the middle. Simon, well, you're no, chipping um, with us. And between these Simon? two, yeah, well, I think this is a really interesting analysis in terms of Rachel McLean. I think she has the right to say what she wants. There is a, clearly a distinction He's between a uh, trans women and women, and it's it's right and proper to draw a distinction between the two. Uh, you can't just uh, this Melissa person can't you can't just put an ill-fitting wig on, some <laughs> lipstick, uh, call yourself Melissa, and then expect everybody to buy into you being a woman. I'm sorry, exactly. it's just not. You know, you you're away with the fairies if you think the general public buy into that. They yeah. just don't. Well, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Away with the fairies, ill-fitting wig. Is, is, yeah. is Simon right, Peter? But, but why move away from the issue that Melissa was rightly highlighting, the underrepresentation of women in Parliament? She was making the case for more for women God's MPs, sake. and instead of addressing that issue, Rachel McLean chose to make a mockery of the way she looks and her gender identity. Now, Simon is absolutely right. There is an absolute distinction between women and trans women. They're not the same. One is based on chromosomal sex, the other is based on gender identity. They are different but equally valid. Yep. And I think we need to not confuse the two. Sex and gender identity are two different things. And my view is live and let live. Paula, the, I can see the cogs um, rolling round. You want to come back on that? It's a you? huge women's rights problem, Lee. Yeah. And we have to address it as it is. So this type of men, they're stealing women's seat. So it's a mockery that this Melissa man, who is a he, yeah. is talking about women's rights yeah. because he, if he, 
eventually will be elected, he's still in a woman's place. Yeah. Okay, so it has to be very clear that gender ideology, that is the ideology behind yeah. this behavior, is promoting sexual fetish, okay, yeah. and is harming children because they need young people and children to believe in gender ideology that is a fantasy in order to validate their sexual fetish. So a mother like me wants to be called a mother, not a birthing person, because these people use this language, okay? They use chest breeder, no, I'm a mother, I feed my babies, okay? I'm a woman, I'm not an uterus haver, a cervix haver, or all this language, sorry for the word, but this is the reality. It's a nonsense language. And I urge each one of you, particularly if you're a father or, the, of a, mo or a mother, to don't use gender language. Simon, is, use it, you're well. validating, the, you're well, validating these ideologies yeah. that is highly dangerous. Surely, and surely, surely, once you erasure of surely, female surely identity. Surely has got a point that this man, and let's be clear, most people will think he is a man with a wig on, whether it's ill-fitting or not, I don't know. But it is a man with a wig on, identifying as a woman. Is he stealing women's jobs and women's rights? This is a storm in a teacup. Okay. There are no trans women in Parliament. The idea that somehow women MPs are under threat, that is a nonsense. It's a scaremongering tactic, and I think it does not befit a democratic Parliament and a democratic people to demonise trans people when there is no threat to women's seats. So, but, but is it, it well, it's becoming increasingly serious because Labour's proposals, what they are contem uh, contemplating is making it an offence, an aggravating offence, to label somebody incorrectly. Le and that is a serious issue. I, I would be totally opposed to such legislation. But they are contemplating, if they get into power, making it an aggravating offence uh, to misgender somebody. And, and that's where uh, Rachel McLean would then have a serious problem. Problem. Exactly. Thank and you, and that's Simon. totally wrong. Thank you. Totally I, I'm wrong. also against criminalisation. Yeah. But I think it's just common decency to be yeah. respectful of other people. Even if we disagree with them, just show respect and no. kindness. Yeah, there's there's get, too get, much no. hate and prejudice we in get the world. That. No, this Paola, is an excuse. Paula, you're a woman. I reject gender language. Okay, so... Put me in prison. It's, it's hard for, for, for us, well, it's difficult for me, to, to, to know how how furious you are being a woman, you can yes. have babies, you can feed babies, you can do all that. How difficult is it to, to accept this? Well, you can't accept this nonsense. I can't. Can it's nonsense. And many women like me and also men are opposing this nonsense. The Labour Party doesn't know still, but he will see that we are fighting back. We will fight back in the streets, in the toilets, in the single-sex spaces. We will not let this Sounds nonsense like Churchill. Win. Sounds like a Never. Churchill speech, that does. Never. Peter, Never. I mean, we, we, we see this, um, Melissa. You know, back in the day, years and years ago, if people had been hanging around with, with men, especially with, with wigs on, and going into to women's changing rooms and, and, and women's safe spaces, they'd have been, they'd have been locked up. Yeah. Well, hang on. Yeah. Women have been going into... Trans women have been going to women's spaces for decades without a problem. I've got a friend who works in a women's centre in the north of England. That centre, with the agreement of both the staff and the women users, has accepted trans women for seven years. There's never been a problem. To, to do this, to demonise people... You think of someone great like Jan Morris, the great trans explorer, journalist and so on. Yeah. To insult her in this way, and, and the memory of so many other trans women who've done amazing, wonderful okay. things, I think it's just, it's just wrong, and it's not, not compatible with a kind, generous, compassionate society. No. Th there's no. a firm no. shake no. of the head here. Paula. Yes, this is an excuse. This is a way to silence women. They used to burn us to the stake. Now they're trying to cancel us on social media. They try to silence us using this be kind tactic. You know what, Lee? I'm very kind and I'm very compassionate. And that's why I care for these children who are castrated. I care for these children who have their breasts mutilated, okay? Healthy breasts. And they're sterilized in the name of an ideal that were never affected children and young adults ever in history. When they tell you that there were many trans people in history, they're lying to you. You know what was affecting this, who was affecting this ideology? Only few old men. And they were called transvestites. That's it.
It's only because of pornography online and social media that now in the Western countries we have this social contagion. And we have to address it before it will destroy our society, our family values and women's rights. Powerful stuff, Paula. Simon, do you want to come back on that? Yeah, uh, well, I, I agree with Paula. In terms of young people, it's gone far too far. They are, it's, it's, it is child abuse. I mean, the, the, the ability for children to have uh, medical interventions is wholly inappropriate. And I think we'll look back in years to come. Okay. We'll look back in years to come and think that's been a big mistake. So a bit one-sided, this. Uh, Probably Peter on his own on this one. Peter, final 20 seconds. Children are not being uh, medically and surgically changed. There's no surgical abuse of removal of breasts or Hormonal genitals therapy. and so on. That is not happening. It's, it's illegal in this country. Hormonal Plus, therapy. some young people, a small number, yep. are receiving hormone therapy, but it's reversible. And it's it, not. It, it, it is done with parent. In 99% of cases, it's done with parental consent after many years of counselling and support. Look,